Judges chapter 19 In those days Israel had no king. Now a Levite who lived in a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim took a concubine from Bethlehem in Judah. But she was unfaithful to him. She left him and went back to her parents' home in Bethlehem, Judah. After she had been there for four months, her husband went to persuade her to return. He had with him his servant and two donkeys. She took him into her parents' home, and when her father saw him, he gladly welcomed him. His father-in-law, the woman's father, prevailed on him to stay. So he remained with him three days, eating and drinking and sleeping there. On the fourth day, they got up early, and he prepared to leave. But the woman's father said to his son-in-law, Refresh yourself with something to eat, then you can go. So the two of them sat down to eat and drink together. Afterwards, the woman's father said, Please stay tonight and enjoy yourself. And when the man got up to go, his father-in-law persuaded him, so he stayed there that night. On the morning of the fifth day, when he rose to go, the woman's father said, Refresh yourself, wait till afternoon. So the two of them ate together. Then when the man with his concubine and his servant got up to leave, his father-in-law, the woman's father, said, Now look, it's almost evening. Spend the night here. The day is nearly over. Stay and enjoy yourself. Early tomorrow morning you can get up and be on your way home. But, unwilling to stay another night, the man left and went towards Jebus, that is, Jerusalem, with his two saddled donkeys and his concubine. When they were near Jebus and the day was almost gone, the servant said to his master, Come, let's stop at this city of the Jebusites and spend the night. His master replied, No, we won't go into any city whose people are not Israelites. We will go on to Gibeah. He added, Come, let's try to reach Gibeah or Rama and spend the night in one of those places. So they went on, and the sun set as they neared Gibeah in Benjamin. There they stopped to spend the night. They went and sat in the city square, but no one took them in for the night. That evening, an old man from the hill country of Ephraim, who was living in Gibeah, the inhabitants of the place were Benjaminites, came in from his work in the fields. When he looked and saw the traveller in the city square, the old man asked, Where are you going? Where did you come from? He answered, we are on our way from Bethlehem in Judah to a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim where I live. I have been to Bethlehem in Judah, and now I am going to the house of the Lord. No one has taken me in for the night. We have both straw and fodder for our donkeys and bread and wine for ourselves, your servants, me, the woman, and the young man with us. We don't need anything. You are welcome at my house, the old man said. Let me supply whatever you need, only don't spend the night in the square. So he took him into his house and fed his donkeys. After they had washed their feet, they had something to eat and drink. While they were enjoying themselves, some of the wicked men of the city surrounded the house. Pounding on the door, they shouted to the old man who owned the house, Bring out the man who came to your house so we can have sex with him. The owner of the house went outside and said to them, No, my friends, don't be so vile. Since this man is my guest, don't do this outrageous thing. Look, here is my virgin daughter and his concubine. I will bring them out to you now, and you can use them and do to them whatever you wish. But as for this man, don't do such an outrageous thing. But the men would not listen to him. So the man took his concubine and sent her outside to them and they raped her and abused her throughout the night, and at dawn they let her go. At daybreak, the woman went back to the house where her master was staying, fell down at the door, and lay there until daylight. When her master got up in the morning and opened the door of the house and stepped out to continue on his way, there lay his concubine, fallen in the doorway of the house, with her hands on the threshold. He said to her, Get up, let's go. But there was no answer. 
Then the man put her on his donkey and set out for home. When he reached home, he took a knife and cut up his concubine, limb by limb, into twelve parts, and sent them into all the areas of Israel. Everyone who saw it was saying to one another, Such a thing has never been seen or done, not since the day the Israelites came up out of Egypt. Just imagine, we must do something. So speak up. Judges chapter 20 Then all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and from the land of Gilead, came together as one and assembled before the Lord in Mizpah. The leaders of all the people of the tribes of Israel took their places in the assembly of God's people, four hundred thousand men armed with swords. The Benjaminites heard that the Israelites had gone up to Mizpah. Then the Israelites said, Tell us how this awful thing happened. So the Levite, the husband of the murdered woman, said, I and my concubine came to Gibeah in Benjamin to spend the night. During the night the men of Gibeah came after me and surrounded the house intending to kill me. They raped my concubine and she died. I took my concubine, cut her into pieces, and sent one piece to each region of Israel's inheritance because they committed this lewd and outrageous act in Israel. Now all you Israelites speak up and tell me what you have decided to do. All the men rose up together as one, saying, None of us will go home. No, not one of us will return to his house. But now this is what we'll do to Gibeah. We'll go up against it in the order decided by casting lots. We'll take ten men out of every hundred from all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred from a thousand, and a thousand from ten thousand, to get provisions for the army. Then when the army arrives at Gibeah in Benjamin, it can give them what they deserve for this outrageous act done in Israel. So all the Israelites got together and united as one against the city. The tribes of Israel sent messengers throughout the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What about this awful crime that was committed among you? Now turn those wicked men of Gibeah over to us, so that we may put them to death and purge the evil from Israel. But the Benjaminites would not listen to their fellow Israelites. From their towns they came together at Gibeah to fight against the Israelites. At once the Benjaminites mobilized 26,000 swordsmen from their towns, in addition to 700 able young men from those living in Gibeah. Among all these soldiers there were 700 select troops who were left-handed, each of whom could sling a stone at a hare and not miss. Israel, apart from Benjamin, mustered 400,000 swordsmen, all of them fit for battle. The Israelites went up to Bethel and inquired of God. They said, Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Benjaminites? The Lord replied, Judah shall go first. The next morning, the Israelites got up and pitched camp near Gibeah. The Israelites went out to fight the Benjaminites and took up battle positions against them at Gibeah. The Benjaminites came out of Gibeah and cut down 22,000 Israelites on the battlefield that day. But the Israelites encouraged one another and again took up their positions where they had stationed themselves the first day. The Israelites went up and wept before the Lord until evening. And they inquired of the Lord. They said, Shall we go up again to fight against the Benjaminites, our fellow Israelites? The Lord answered, Go up against them. Then the Israelites drew near to Benjamin the second day. This time, when the Benjaminites came out from Gibeah to oppose them, they cut down another 18,000 Israelites, all of them armed with swords. Then all the Israelites, the whole army, went up to Bethel, and there they sat, weeping before the Lord. They fasted that day until evening, and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings to the Lord. And the Israelites inquired of the Lord. In those days the Ark of the Covenant of God was there, with Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, ministering before it. They asked, 
Shall we go up again to fight against the Benjaminites, our fellow Israelites, or not? The Lord responded, Go, for tomorrow I will give them into your hands. Then Israel set an ambush around Gibeah. They went up against the Benjaminites on the third day and took up positions against Gibeah as they had done before. The Benjaminites came out to meet them and were drawn away from the city. They began to inflict casualties on the Israelites as before, so that about thirty men fell in the open field and on the roads, the one leading to Bethel and the other to Gibeah. While the Benjaminites were saying, We are defeating them as before, the Israelites were saying, Let's retreat and draw them away from the city to the roads. All of the men of Israel moved from their places and took up positions at Baal Tamar, and the Israelite ambush charged out of its place on the west of Gibeah. Then ten thousand of Israel's able young men made a frontal attack on Gibeah. The fighting was so heavy that the Benjaminites did not realize how near disaster was. The Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel, and on that day the Israelites struck down 25,100 Benjaminites, all armed with swords. Then the Benjaminites saw that they were beaten. Now the men of Israel had given way before Benjamin, because they relied on the ambush they had set near Gibeah. Those who had been in ambush made a sudden dash into Gibeah, spread out and put the whole city to the sword. The Israelites had arranged with the ambush so that they should send up a great cloud of smoke from the city, and then the Israelites would counterattack. The Benjaminites had begun to inflict casualties on the Israelites, about thirty, and they said, We are defeating them as in the first battle. But when the column of smoke began to rise from the city, the Benjaminites turned and saw the whole city going up in smoke. Then the Israelites counterattacked, and the Benjaminites were terrified because they realized that disaster had come on them. So they fled before the Israelites in the direction of the wilderness, but they could not escape the battle. And the Israelites who came out of the towns cut them down there. They surrounded the Benjaminites, chased them, and easily overran them in the vicinity of Gibeah on the east. Eighteen thousand Benjaminites fell, all of them valiant fighters. As they turned and fled towards the wilderness to the rock of Rimon, the Israelites cut down five thousand men along the roads. They kept pressing after the Benjaminites as far as Gidom and struck down two thousand more. On that day, twenty-five thousand Benjaminite swordsmen fell, all of them valiant fighters. But six hundred of them turned and fled into the wilderness to the rock of Rimon, where they stayed for four months. The men of Israel went back to Benjamin and put all the towns to the sword, including the animals and everything else they found. All the towns they came across they set on fire. Luke chapter 21 as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, Watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, 
Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment, in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars, on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives, and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Psalm 91 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling. No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you, 
to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Proverbs chapter 29 Whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. A man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. By justice a king gives a country stability, but those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. Those who flatter their neighbors are spreading nets for their feet. Evildoers are snared by their own sin, but the righteous shout for joy and are glad. The righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. Mockers stir up a city, but the wise turn away anger. If a wise person goes to court with a fool, the fool rages and scoffs, and there is no peace. The bloodthirsty hate a person of integrity and seek to kill the upright. Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. If a ruler listens to lies, all his officials become wicked. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. If a king judges the poor with fairness, his throne will be established forever. A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. When the wicked thrive, so does sin, but the righteous will see their downfall. Discipline your children, and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Servants cannot be corrected by mere words, though they understand they will not respond. Do you see someone who speaks in haste? There is more hope for a fool than for them. A servant pampered from youth will turn out to be insolent. An angry person stirs up conflict, and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. The accomplices of thieves are their own enemies. They are put under oath and dare not testify. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Many seek an audience with a ruler, but it is from the Lord that one gets justice. The righteous detest the dishonest, the wicked detest the upright.